Welcome back to the kitchen. Today I want to talk about the Synthrotech NAND Synth. Now, right off the bat, I got to get something out of the way. I go on YouTube and there'll be some guy or a kid and they're like, check out my synthesizer that I built. Like, no. You didn't build a synth, okay? When someone says the word synth to me, I think of Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. I think of Bob Moog with a bunch of analog patch cables. I think of some big digital thing like a ROM card or something. I think mean, something that you can like play a scale on, do octaves on. This is not a synthesizer, okay? And I'm not trying to like fool anybody into thinking, like even with a gun to my head, that I could ever make a synthesizer. This is a noise synth, and we call it that out of lack of a better term. I mean, electricity comes in, sound comes out. That's like the only similarity. So, check out my synthesizer that I built. Hey, rock and roll. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm making this, it's like, uh, I'm going to call it the Beast, I guess. It's like a big box with a subwoofer, a couple of speakers with tweeters, and then there's, there'll be a mixer in there, some echo boxes, and a spring reverb. And I'm going to fill it up with a bunch of these, like, noise synth. <laughs> I can't even, I can't even say that with a straight face. A couple of these, you know, noise modules. So it'll be like a modular noise box. Dare I say it? Synth. So, yeah, I'm working on the Beast and I saw that this company, Synthrotech, offers a PCB for this thing called a NAND synth. So Synthrotech, now that's a pretty cool name for a really cool company. Everything they sell, I'm like, I want one of those. But the bad thing is they really don't have, they only have a handful of stuff that they sell. Now, all of it is excellent. Like I said, they've got like a sequencer kit. They're, most of it is like synthy noisemaker type stuff, but they do have a fuzz face and then uh, uh, a, a rat, which are like two of the best dirt boxes ever. So there you go. Now, this NAND synth here, what we have, there's a master power switch, then we have two switches that eat like either or, they affect the way that the oscillators feed each other or direct out. Uh, there's four pots, one of them is volume and the other three affect the, the oscillations. Um, it's a single chip, there's like, I don't know, five or six resistors, five or six capacitors. Four of those capacitors are real small right near the chip and those would affect you could put those on switches and they have like two those would really affect you know go with like a small value and a large value I didn't I wanted to keep this simple I only did a couple mods that I'm gonna cover now one of the mods that they they do talk about they have on the instructions there's a bomb bill of materials then there's the instructions you don't even need the instructions the PCB is so well labeled every single thing is documented on there all you need is the part list. As long as you know which part you're picking up, you can build this without looking at anything. And that's hats off to Central Tech for doing their own work. I mean, some people, uh, this is like kind of a intermediate beginner kit. Like a beginner would start with an oscillator, like a 555 chip oscillator with maybe a CDS cell. Then you move up to like an Atari punk console. Well, this is the next logical project. It isn't that much more complicated, it isn't that much more parts, but the payoff is like, wow, you get a lot of really cool sounds out of this circuit. But they didn't like, okay, well here's your PCB, put it together. They really did their homework, which, I mean, they're, forgive me for getting sidetracked, but I've seen this, and it's this train of thought in the community of the people that know what they're doing, like, well, if we spoon feed everyone and hold their hands, there never will be any innovation. And it's like, well, if a guy can't figure out his first three builds, <laughs> he's going to move on to something else. He's not going to invent the next, you know, flanger echo or something crazy. He's like, give me a break. Help people that need to help, you know. Just because the guy's paint by numbers doesn't mean you should ignore him. I mean, whatever. Anyway, Centrotech isn't like that. They're good people, and everything you need to know is well documented. I had absolutely 100% confidence when I built this, and it worked right away. So the first mod that they were talking about was this dive bomb mod, and that's when you kill the power. It doesn't just stop. It goes down, and it like kind of freaks out depending on how you have the knob set. 
So what that is, is the, and when the power comes in, it doesn't just go right to the chip. There's a capacitor in there. Those charge up with electricity, and then they slowly discharge. So if you mod that, if you put in a different value, like the larger capacitor you do, the more dramatic or the longer that's going to last. So what I chose to do, I ran two wires up, and I put them on a switch so I could have the stock capacitor and then this massive one. So I can have it run stock and it'll dive bomb. When I put the big one on there, it doesn't dive bomb. It just slowly tapers, which is really cool and kind of musical. So the stock value is a 100 UF, and I paired it up with a 10,000 UF. This is a massive capacitor, and that's switchable. So like I said, I can get stock. Now, coming in, the power coming in, there is a power switch, but what I did was I put in a momentary kill switch, so when I push that, it disconnects the battery. It's kind of like the opposite of a doorbell, like a doorbell ding-dong. This would be, well, the doorbell's always ding-dong, and until you push it, then there's nothing. It's called a normally closed switch, and they sell those at Radio Shack. So that goes on the positive wire coming in off your battery or your power supply, your adapter. You cut in that normally closed kill switch to activate the dive bomb when the power switch is on. Then you don't have to click, click. You can sit there and fire it off. Anyway, right after that uh, kill switch, I put in a starve pot. It's like a volume control, but it reduces the amount of current that goes to the circuit. Now, if you look around, like Beavis Audio, he recommends on his diagram it's like a 5K pot, which is a great value. It's a great starting point for the circuit. I tried everything from a 2K up to a 250, and I found that 50K was the one I chose. When I turn it all the way down, maximum resistance, there's no sound. I have to bring it up a little bit, then I'll start to hear it barely sputtering, so I can get full bandwidth out of this device. Be a little bit more safer, a 20K, when you turn it all the way down, you can still get real close to the bottom, but it'll still be making some noise. And how you wire that is, your power comes in on pin 3, pots have 3 pins, comes in and hits pin 3, and then coming out on pin 2 going into the circuit where the positive wire would normally hook up. Uh, the only other mod that I did was on the main power switch to turn it on, I cut in this little push button. So if I want to just kind of fire it off rather than toggle that switch, I can fire it off with this. If it's on and I want to kill it to activate the dive bomb, I've got that other push button switch that breaks the circuit. So I pretty much hooked up every type of switch known to man to this, except like a like Frankenstein switch, I could put that in there. Um, the only other thing was there is a pad that's labeled D1, like diode one, LED, uh, light emitting diode. That's where you're, you, if you want to hook up an LED, that's where the diode goes. There's a, uh, it's a circle written around that, and there's a square uh, pad and then the round pad. The square pad was the negative and the round one was the positive voltage. It's like 1.8 volts or something. I don't know, I may have, may have my starve pot going. I don't know what the true voltage was, but I hooked up a giant 10 millimeter LED. And it's cool, like the LED comes on when you turn it on, but then if you mess with that starve pot, it gets dim or bright. So it kind of gives you a visual representation of how much you're choking it for. Now, I guess that's about it. Um, I can go ahead and demo this thing for you. So check it out.